everybody, Todd Metalhead Weatherman here. Hopefully everyone's having a good Saturday. I needed a couple of days off because I was still recovering from being sick while I was covering Helene. Speaking of which, last couple of weeks have been pretty crazy, huh guys? We covered Helene, then we covered Milton. Two major hurricanes in two weeks is it's absolutely crazy to think about. Thankfully in the short term, we don't really have too much to worry about from the tropics. However, there's going to be some notable changes of the weather pattern here as well that I feel like I would be remiss if I didn't talk about that either. It's been really hard to keep up with uh, everything as of late due to the tropics. So while we got this break, I figured I may as well talk about what's going on in the short term here and into the medium range as well. But in the short term, not much to really discuss as far as severe weather is concerned. We do have this marginal risk that stretches through the Appalachia, even in towards the eastern parts of the Ohio Valley. Main threat for this is wind and hail. Not really going to be too concerned with that. There may be a couple storms that are a little bit above the garden variety that we would expect during this time of year. So just be on the lookout. Sometimes we do have those marginal risks that will try to overperform. Don't necessarily think this will be one of those occasions, but still, you never know. In any case, though, on the day's fourth weight outlooks here, potential is too low all across the board here. But it's really after that point where things kind of capture my interest, particularly with the jet stream is where the first signs kind of show themselves a bit here. Another thing to talk about with this jet stream, by the way, will be the fact that we're going to end up seeing some really cool mornings out here towards the east here. We could even see some sneaky 30s working their way into even the Carolinas and the southeast before all is set and done here. So within the next three to five days here, expect some below average mornings here. Soon though, after that, we start to see some ridging coming into play, and this is going to increase the chance for showers and storms down the line, especially over towards the southern plains here. So we get towards about 162 hours out. This is going to be towards Saturday afternoon into Saturday night is when I think the chance of severe weather kicks in. Another thing to make note of here is I take this back here, and you can even see it on the Euro. As this trough begins to come into play here, we may even have the potential for some winter weather over here towards the higher elevations of the Rockies. So here's where our severe weather chances kind of kick in later in the evening here. Timing is going to be a key factor with that. I don't expect anything magnanimous with it in the short term here, but it really depends on the progression of this trough. So we go beyond that point here. We'll see this trough get cut off here. Both the GFS and the Euro are kind of going on board with that. But one other thing that I've noticed here, GFS also has this tropical feature that comes into play as well here. It's not the most impressive or wound up feature, but something to keep an eye on as we go forward here. So as we go with this particular model run and go outside of the Euro's range here, which is 10 days here, 240 hours, we see these two features try to interact with each other. Now, typically what would happen in this case, or what I would expect to happen is this feature would end up being kicked out to see and not be a threat here. But GFS actually has this lingering around here. And not necessarily a Fujiwara effect, but some weird instance here where we end up seeing a little bit of resurgence from this feature, or maybe the new feature becomes tropical itself. And then maybe an impact could occur over here towards the Carolinas, towards the end of the model run here. Of course, this is 16 days out, so I'm not going to read into this too heavily. Something I will be keeping an eye on to see what kind of trends we end up getting out of this. Speaking of trends, though, while I'm at it here, I'll take a look at the end of this 16-day outlook after this trough comes through. We do have another trough that falls in behind it. I do think that this may increase chances of wintry precip maybe over towards the far northern edge of the border here to go along with this. And then towards the very end of the model run here, I would expect an increase in temperatures in particular over towards the southwest and cooler temperatures out towards the eastern half of the U.S. here. So definitely starting to see signs of maybe another positive PA coming into play here where it's warmer out towards the west, cooler out towards the east due to this troughing and the ridging that we're seeing here. So let's go ahead and take it take in some of these outlooks here. This is the three to four week outlook that I'm looking at right now. And this is a good reflection of what we're seeing towards the end of that model run here. Starting to see those above average temperatures kind of creeping their way out towards the southwest here. And then, of course, out towards the eastern half of the U.S. We're slightly above average here. The uh, percentages here don't really equate to what the exact values will be. 
but I do think we're going to be kind of flip-flopping a little bit in this time frame here from the 26th to November 8th, which is ironically my birthday. But in any case, though, if we look on these maps here, you can see that 8 to 14 day outlook. We actually go into a little bit of a negative PNA where it's cooler out towards the west and warmer out towards the east here. But I do think that we're going to see a few variable changes with these outlooks in the days ahead here. It's going to be kind of tricky to see how things kind of play out with this. But overall, if we were to look at it from an average standpoint, this is a pretty good uh, depiction of what we're going to be getting here. Also notice on the 6 to 10 day outlook with those troughs coming in, the probability of above average moisture definitely increases more over towards the middle part of the country. It's a four, 8 to 14 day outlook. I want it 6 to 10. But here you go. This is a good depiction of what we have going on here. I do think that's going to be in large part due to that first trough here. That second trough is a little bit variable in my opinion. But of course, like I said, we'll have to wait and see how things play out. But I have pretty good confidence in that first trough coming into play here. Just what it will do is still questionable at this point here. As so we go ahead and take a look at the GFS here, there's a couple of things that we're trying to pick up on right now. For one, we're going to be looking at a frontal boundary coming in, of course, like I mentioned before, and this is where the severe weather chances really start to ramp up later in the week here, especially towards next weekend. Start to see some of that warm air beginning to build over towards the southern plains, and this is where we see that cold air begin to sneak in. And with the collision of these two air masses, we usually can get a pretty good idea of what's expected next. So as you can see, cold air over towards the Rockies, warm air out ahead of it, chance of severe weather, boom. And then really the chance kind of drops off a little bit. You don't have a uh, big disparity between that warm and cold air. So really at that point, showers and storms really just come into play a little bit more after that then we really just have to wait and see what's next but if we go back a little bit you can actually see those cooler temperatures in the morning coming into play for the deep south here even towards my area you start to see those 40s coming into play and those darker those lighter shades of blue here especially as we get towards the 26 are coming into play for areas like maine far northeast mainly even new england could get into the action there and as we go further along here may even see the ohio valleys get into the lower 40s maybe even a few 30s could be sprinkled in here or there now one thing that we're going to be also paying attention to really closely and i'm going to take this back again just to make sure that we have a good correlation between our dew point and our moisture here we're mainly going to be looking around the time frame of the 19th into the 20th which kind of backs up so we can kind of back up our claim with severe weather here as we continue to go forward here this is where i would expect our best chance to be will be right around the evening of the 19th here we do see a decent moisture return here to go along with it and that moisture does come into play as we head into the 20th here i just think the other dynamics just aren't really showing up right now in models of course i'm going to be paying extra close attention to this with us being still so far out but we're still a week out, so things can quickly change with that. Another thing to pay attention to is going to be the temperature anomalies here. And we're actually going to go ahead and just pull it up right here. I was going to keep that towards the bottom left here. Oops, wrong thing. But we're going to go ahead and pull it up on the main screen for you guys. So right now, as you can see, especially over towards the deep south, we're talking mainly about the temperatures being right at average if not maybe a few degrees above or below for a large part of the country that's what it's like unless you're getting out towards the west where we're about maybe 10 maybe sometimes as much as 20 degrees above average here but as we continue to go forward start to see a higher concentration of those above average temperatures out towards the midwest over here and southern plains and that's going to be a trend for the next few days here and then, of course, as that cold front comes in, look what starts to happen here. Start to see more of that troughing happening out towards the east here, especially towards the evening hours. We start to get well below average here, maybe even 20 degrees below here. And then you see the contrast over here towards the northwest here, where we're 25 plus degrees above average, maybe even hitting 30 plus degrees. So as time continues to go forward here, cold air is beginning to build out towards the east here. 
even getting the southeast into the actual world, 10 degrees below, we're starting to see those 30 plus degree average temperatures are pushing outward more towards the northern states. Eventually, we start to see that cold air beginning to build in, that new trough beginning to kick in. And with that, we start to see some extremes here. We're getting some 30 to 35 degree below average temperatures, if not even lower than that in some of the higher elevations. So we end up being in a little bit of a topsy-turvy phase here, as I would say. And then from that point onward here, we start to level back out, but not before we end up seeing a little bit of a flip here where we're starting to be average once again, kind of going back to where we came, so to speak. And then out west, we're a little bit warmer than average where we're seeing those 10, 15, maybe even 20 plus degree above average temperatures here. Some interesting player areas to make note of here before all said and done, you're seeing even Florida below average here by about maybe 11 degrees by the end of this run here. So there's a few things to pay attention to before all is set and done. So looking at GFS here, I'm not expecting a whole lot to be shown here in the short term. A couple things to make note of here is a couple winter winter weather chances over here towards the UP and Michigan, maybe even towards Wisconsin. And then as we go forward here, weather pattern stays relatively quiet maybe even a few chances of snow here also towards the northeast here mainly expecting flurries nothing that would drive anyone crazy here but as we go further along this is what we start to see a little bit more in the way of organized snow here of course this is going to be over towards the rockies and the higher elevations not really not really uh, surprised to see that during this time of year that's definitely not uncommon and then as we go further along here, this is where we start to see that organized chance of severe weather here by the time we get towards Sunday evening next week. After that point, storm weakens from that from there. We do have some Gulf of Mexico moisture that helps keep the thing going, but really it's going to be just more so chances of rain beyond that. And then also we have to watch that feature there. Like I said, I'm not expecting a whole lot out of it just based off of model data here, but still something I'm going to be keeping an extra close eye on to see if anything trends up or down even at this point. But really at this point, that's all I got for you guys on this video here. We'll be doing a tropical outlook tomorrow. Uh, make sure you stay in tune for that. Make sure you hit that like button, crush that subscribe button, and obliterate that share button. And I'll see you next time. Till then, take care.